Hey everyone and welcome to CIC Media. No matter where you are watching or listening from, we feel honored that you have decided to spend the next 45 minutes or so with us today. We really believe in the mission God has given us here in the Cayman Islands and we are so happy that you are a part of it. If this content impacts you, we invite you to take a moment, no matter which platform you are joining us from, and share this with someone. If you have any questions or want to connect with us, head over to caymanadventist.org and click contact or call us at 345-945-9029. That's 345-945-9029. Now, let the message begin. And good evening, everybody. Um, I would like to add my quarter of welcome to all of you who are uh, joining us this evening, this Friday evening, wherever you are on the planet, um, whether you're here in the Cayman Islands um, or you're in the BRAC. I want to say a hi, hello to those uh, men in the BRAC and women as well. Or if you're joining us from the beautiful island of Jamaica, some of you may be joining us from Jamaica or other parts of the world, Canada or the United States of America, wherever you are, even in Ukraine or in Russia, um, we, we pray God's blessing on you and we're happy to have you this evening as we <coughs> start uh, this weekend activities of our men's convention here in the Cayman Islands Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. I am delighted to be with you. Um, it's an honor and a pleasure, and I'd like to just uh, congratulate our men's ministries director, um, Pastor Vaughn Henry, and the team um, who have put this program together. I want to thank you for the invitation to share the next few moments with you. And um, for those of you who are at home, most of you are at home, you have the luxury of being very comfortable as we probably use this evening's presentation um, as a Friday evening, Sabbath evening Vespa for all our men and their family families as we uh, spend the next few moments uh, just paying some attention to the Word of God. I understand that tomorrow um, we will continue in the series Men of God men of change and of course we'll be coming out of the north side area tomorrow morning all being well and so the theme that um, I was given uh, to work on or to work with for this year's men's convention men of God men of change and so I wrestled with the Lord about this and I've decided to speak on the subject men of God tonight and then tomorrow morning we will deal with part two of that theme, men of change. So why don't you bow your heads with me then as we um, you know, talk to the Lord and invite his presence here and, and seek his help as we open his word. Father... All across the length and breadth of these islands and islands far distant, major cities around the world, it is very possible that your people may be listening tonight. And for those who will listen days after the recording of this presentation, I now ask God for your divine help. Pray that your Holy Spirit will Download in my brain a message for your people tonight. May we feed on it, Lord, and may your name be glorified as a result. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, so permit me, if you can, um, to just tag on a few more words to this theme, men of God. And I'm going to ask... Um, men of God, are we still in the faith? Maybe that's what I want to work on tonight. Men of God, are we still in the faith? Um, and and, and I'm, I tagged it on because I am very conscious that we are at the end of life's journey, that we are at the end of time. I'm very 
conscious, very sensitive that all the signs are telling us that we are at the end. And so if that is true, if we are at the end of our Christian journey, then maybe it's important to stop and ask the question, are we still in the faith? Notice I didn't ask, are we still in church or are we still studying our Sabbath school lesson? No, I, uh, I'm asking, are we still in the faith? In other words, do we have enough Christianity in us to carry us to the end? Mm, do we have enough God enough, enough in us? Do we have enough God in us to take us through the next few days that are ahead of us? Because from all indications in the word of God, perilous times are at hand. Do we as men of God uh, contain enough God in us, have enough spirit enough, have enough faith in us to take us through these last few days that are ahead of us? And that's what we're going to work on tonight. And, and, and you may be wondering, where is this coming from? It is coming from an incident recorded in the Word of God that has been giving me trouble ever since I read it. And I just cannot be comfortable with it. It is an, it is an incident in the Bible that plagued my mind, that troubled my soul, that is giving me no rest. And, 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 and I hope it, it is doing the same thing to you. And if it has not been, then I, when I'm finished tonight, I hope it will. Because it's a very, very troubling incident. It's in the book of Numbers, the 13th chapter of the book of Numbers. So I'm going to ask you to take your Bibles there, whether it's you have the paper Bible or it's on your cell phone or your iPad. Take, take some time out and, um, and, 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 and go to Numbers, the 13th chapter. Numbers chapter 13. Very troublesome text. I'm going to read from verse 1. And as you relax at home, sharing this moment, read along with me. The Bible says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe, of their fathers, you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. I, I want to emphasize that one. From each tribe, you shall send a man. Not just a man, but the Bible gives us a which man or his credential. Every one a leader among them. In other words, in other words, uh, put it uh, put it another way, the, the God told Moses, make sure that the person you're sending is a leader among the each tribe. There are twelve tribes in Israel. You know, Israel is the community of Israel is is is. <clears throat> constructed with 12 tribes. 12 tribes make up uh, the entire nation of Israel. And so all the families of Israel are within 12 tribes. In each tribe, there are a number of families. So you have the tribe of Benjamin and the tribe of Judah and the tribe of God. And there are, so each tribe has a number of families in it. But very interestingly, for every tribe, I don't know how many families may be in any tribe. There could be hundreds and thousands of families in each tribe. But for each tribe, there is a supreme leader. Mm, there's a top leader. There's a leader that represent the, uh, represents the entire uh, families in that tribe or the entire uh, um, um, congregation of that tribe. So every tribe has a leader. So now Moses was instructed to go and select the leaders of the 
12 tribes. These are individuals who are senior members of the church. These are individuals who are long standing in the church. These are the people that the other family members will come to in the tribe when they have a problem. When they have a question to ask, these are the leaders that they'll come to. When they have a situation to settle, these are the leaders that they come to. When they want to ask anything theological, these are the leaders that they come to. Every leader has a tribe. And so God was very specific. <laughs> and now, now, you know, as I read the thing over and over, <clears throat> you know, sometimes you read, you read a Bible text and you read it three times, but it is when you read it the fourth time that something jumps out. Something just jumped out at me. Now I realize, and you'll soon see why God requests that the persons who are going on this trip to spy the land, right, they ought to be the leader. Mm. Not his deputy, but the leader, but the head of the tribe. And by the way, by virtue of being the leader of the tribe, it also means that these these 12 individuals are the spiritual leader of their family, the spiritual leader of the tribe. These are the spiritual leaders of the church. You can't get more spiritual. You can't get more godly. You can't get more reverent than these guys. And so God says, make sure the ones that you send are leaders among the people. Well, the text says, the text says, I'm in verse 3. So Moses sent them, I'll put on my glasses here. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord. All of them, look at the text, all of them men who are heads of the children of Israel. Underline that in your Bible, if it, is, if it is your Bible, because this is very important. It again establishing their credentials. Right? They met the requirement to go on this trip. Right? All of them are men who are the heads of the children of Israel. And I'm, I'm about to tell you, it means, it simply means they are men of God. Oh, Jesus. Let me say that one of mine. It means all, oh Lord, I just love this stuff. All 12 of them are men of God because they are the head of the children of Israel. Mm, they are the spiritual leaders of the congregation. These are senior members of the church. All of them, men of the heads of the children of Israel. Well, what is fascinating about this text? You know, some of you don't like to read the next few verses. You know, when some of you are reading Bible, some of you, when you come across some names that you can't pronounce, you may just, you may just ignore it. But don't ignore this text. Don't ignore this text. For some strange reason, which we will see down the road, the Bible didn't stop there. The Bible went a little further <laughs> and insert the 12 men's name inside the Word of God. And by the way, it's not too easy to get your name in the Bible. Not many people have their name in the Bible. The woman at the well don't have their name in the Bible. The thief on the cross don't have their name in the Bible. The good Samaritan don't have their name in the Bible. There are a lot of people whose name are not in the Bible. These guys get their name written in the Bible. This is so important that the Bible didn't leave them obscure. The Bible actually recorded their names and their father's names. This is serious stuff. So I'm going to read the names of the 12 men because it is written here. And it is written for a purpose. The Bible says, now these were the names from the tribe of Reuben. From, uh, from the tribe of Reuben, Shamoah. Mm. He was a man of God. He was from the son of, he's the son of Zachor. From the tribe of Reuben. Right? Let's see what else. From the tribe of Simeon. That's the second son. Um, um, the man who went on this, on this trip was Shaphat. Right? Mm, his name is in the Bible. He's a man of God. And from the tribe of Judah, the guy who went to represent the tribe of Judah, the head of, the, of Judah, of the tribe of Judah, is Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. Jeff, Jeff you, you guys are familiar with Caleb. Uh, I'm in verse 7. And from the tribe of Issachar, the guy who went, the man of God, the elder of, the, of that tribe, is Eichel, the son of Joseph. 
And from the tribe of Ephraim, the text tells us that the man who represented that tribe, the head of that tribe, is Oshia, the son of Nun. Some of you will know his name that Moses gave him called Joshua, the son of Nun. Verse 9, from the tribe of Benjamin, the man who represented that, the man of God who represented that tribe is Elder Palti. <laughs> hey, Elder Palti was the representative from the tribe of, 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 of Benjamin. From the tribe of Zebulun, all right, it's, it is Elder Gadiel. So the man of God, Elder Gadiel. Hey, and from the tribe of Joseph, that is the tribe of Manasseh, it is Elder Gadi who went to represent that tribe. He was the leader of the tribe, the most senior spiritual leader of the tribe. And from the tribe of Dan, it is Amiel, the son of Jimea, Jimali. Right? He was the spiritual leader. He was the man of God. And from the tribe of Asher, right? it is Elder Sethor who went to represent that tribe. From the tribe of Naphtali, Elder Nabi was the man who went to... These are 12 men of God. And finally, from the tribe of God, Elder Geuel, who was the son of Mika. These were the... Uh, Mekai. These were the 12 men who represented the 12 tribes of Israel. These are 12 men of God. There are 12 elders in the church, 12 leaders in the congregation, 12 spiritual leaders, 12 men who always give advice on spiritual matters, 12 men whom the congregation always come to, to get advice and counsel, 12 men of God. And their job, my dear friend, I'll tell you why this passage is troubling, their job was that they have come to the end of their journey and God decided to send them over to the promised land to go spy out the promised land and come back with a report. And God was too wise to leave that responsibility to some idler in the church. God was too wise to leave that responsibility to some troublemakers in the church. God was too wise to leave that responsibility to some, to some unconverted members of the church. No, no, no. God said to Moses, find the most, uh, the, the, the spiritual leaders. Find these guys who have experience. Find these guys who have been leading his guy, my people send them over because when they go over and see the promised land oh, by the way and they come back hmm, I'm sure when they share the report with the church the church will be happy find people who, who the brethren have confidence in find people who the brethren has, has voted to put them in the position to lead them find people who are the head of their families so that the family members can believe them when they come back find spiritual people find men of god and so they lined up that morning and all 12 of them left town headed for the Canaan, the land of Canaan. Oh, brethren, you know the story quite well. Their assignment was to check out the promised land and come back and give church the report. Ha! If you don't get it as yet, can you imagine, for example, can you imagine, let me put it in perspective. Uh, see if you can, if this makes sense to you. How about God? We're, we're about to enter into the new earth. How about God choose a few of us mm -hmm, and send us over in the new earth to take a look and then come back here to tell the people who are heading to the new earth what things are like over there. Now, I wonder how many of you would sign up for that responsibility. <laughs> how, how about God? You know, we, we, have been, we have been traveling for a mighty long time on planet earth. And everything around us told us that we are, in, we are nearing home, right? We're about to cross over Jordan. Everything about us tells us that we're soon we're, we're in, about to enter the kingdom of God. How about God decide to take a handful of us and take us to heaven uh, for us to walk the streets of gold? Hey, take us to the place where a land that is flowing with milk and honey and spy out the land and then come back to tell this generation that is waiting in our congregation what things are like over there 
I, I guess many of us would put our hands up to be on that, on that trip. And what God did, God says, I just don't need any and anybody who is excited to go. I want you to choose the leaders of my people. Let them come over <laughs> and get a first-hand view of the land that I promised to them. And let them view the land and come back and tell the people. And you'll see, soon understand why God chose the leaders. But by the way, before you sign up to go on that trip, because I would like to go myself. <laughs> before you sign up to go on that trip, one of the things you must know is that before we can reach over into the promised land, or before we can walk on the streets of gold, there are some rough patches ahead of us. Yeah, the Bible says troublesome times will come. Yeah, great tribulations are ahead of us. And, in, and, 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 and those of us who are on this trip, who are going over to spy the promised land, have to pass through that great tribulation in order to make it over the promised land. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder when God select those of us who want to go, when we have to pass through those tribulations and pass through those difficulties and pass through those giants and pass through those setbacks and pass through those trials. I wonder if when we come back, we will have a good report to the people who are, who are waiting to go over with us. I wonder what that report would be. Do we have enough God in us to take us through those rough times that are ahead of us before we hit the promised land? Do we have enough faith in us to carry us through before we hit the promised land? Do we have enough? Hey, and so these 10, these 12 men went over. And that's the nature of their job. And you know the story quite well. The 12 men went over. Watch a preacher, watch a preacher. The 12 men went over. They saw the same thing. Hallelujah. They walked on the same real estate. They ate the same food. They, hey, hello, all their five senses connected with the same things. And yet, the Bible says, when they came back, they came back with two different reports. After they spied the promised land, hey, hallelujah, they came back to the camp, they came back to the church. They came back to Moses, the conference president. They came back to the church and they gave two separate reports. Twelve, it's amazing stuff. Twelve men saw the same thing. Yeah? Ten of them saw impossibility. Two of them saw an opportunity. Ten of them saw failure. Mm. Two of them saw the mighty hand of God. Ten of them saw trouble, discouragement, mm, frustration, disappointment. Ten of them felt disappointment. Two of them felt excitement. And you ask yourself the question, what happened over in Canaan that caused the leadership to split? Mm, what happened in the promised land that caused 12 experienced members of the church to split. What happened? And this is where I have a problem. Because I cannot rest until I know what caused the majority of the leadership of the church at the time. Uh, to split, to, to go into chaos. So I, I still can't understand it. Ten of them. Ten leaders. Of the brethren. And, 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 and I started to investigate this thing and I realized, I, I realized that those who came out on the Lord's side saw things through the eyes of faith. Let, let, me, let me talk to you, church. We do not know, hang on, hang on, we don't know how long these leaders who went over have been in the position that they were in. Let me, let me help you with that. If you don't understand where I'm going, let me, let me help you with that. They were the head of the tribes of Israel. We don't know how long they have been head. The Bible hasn't told us that. But one thing we do know is that they end up being the head of the tribe at the time when the church was ready to enter Canaan. Ah, 
Let me say that one more time. We don't know how long they had that position. We don't know how long they have been leading their, their tribes. But what we do know, at the very moment where the church needs to enter Canaan, they were the one who were leading the church. They were the one who were leading their family. They were the one who were leading the tribes. Mm. And, and, and so, so it becomes clear in my mind that if if. If, if the church of God reaches the border of Canaan and we have leaders in our families who are not strong in the Lord and we have leaders in our churches who are not strong in the Lord and we have men of God who only attend church but don't have faith in them, then we're definitely going to end up the same way the children of Israel ended up on the borders of Canaan. In other words, when it comes to the end of our journey, hey, we must expect leaders who not, don't go to church or study their Sabbath school lesson or return their tithe, but leaders who have the spirit and the power of the living God in them. You know, that we need, man, when I say leaders, I'm talking about all of us as men of our homes and men of our families because we are the head of our tribes and therefore God is expecting us to have enough faith in us. And enough God, enough, and enough Christianity in us to take us and the family through these last days. Because understand, if you can, you will see giants in the land. Hey, difficult times will come. Difficult circumstances will come. Trouble will come. And unless we have God in us, we will fail like these ten men failed. Men of God, do we have enough God in us? So let's examine what happened here. Go back to the text and examine what happened here. Well, they went to the, when they came with their report, they said, Brother Moses, we, we saw the land. It does flow with milk and honey. But we see some problems. We saw, we saw giants. Oh Lord, help us. We saw giants. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We saw giants over there. In other words, Moses, we really weren't expecting to see. Oh, man, help us in the church. He said, Brother Moses, you know, you know the thing, we have, heard so, we have heard so much about this land flowing with milk and honey, right? Yeah, we never heard that there was, couldn't you tell us that there was giants? Oh, Lord have mercy. We, we were shocked to know that God is bringing us in a land filled with giants. Because when we read about the promised land, there ain't no giants in the story. Hey, all our life we're in church, we never heard that giant. All these years we have been walking, hey, walking from Egypt day and night, heading to Canaan. Not a soul told us that there were giants. So we were shocked to see. And by the way, why would God bring us in a land where giants are? Listen to me, men of God. You need to understand. There's a reason why God never moved the giants before the children of Israel reached there. Hey, somebody. There's a reason why God didn't clear the land out before the children of Israel reached there. Because God needed them to trust in him. And so as you come close to your journey, you must expect some giants in your land. But don't watch their size because your God is bigger. Don't watch the circumstances because your God is stronger. Hey, we need under these circumstances men who are not afraid of the giants that are in the land. Because if you're afraid of the giants, your family members, your church members, your colleagues will never cross over. Giants in the land. So people, men of God, listen to the preacher. Uh, right now in these last days, we are in lands filled with giants. And unless your eyes are on the, on the eyes of the living God, you too will fail. And so what happened? These guys saw these giants and rather remembering that God is on their side, rather than remembering that God is greater than the giants in their land, they started to fail. They started to tremble. They started to shake. This fear took hold of them. They came back to Moses. They said, Moses, giants over, oh Lord have mercy, giants over there. Huh? As if Moses didn't know. Giants over there. Hear the, people, hear the preacher tonight, my dear friends. As we come to the end of our journey, we are walking in circumstances and environment 
filled with giants. And if giants hasn't reached you as yet, you're going to find some giants in your lifetime. You're going to meet some giants before you cross Jordan. You're going to meet some difficult time before you cross Jordan. You're going to meet some difficulties before you cross Jordan. And there's a reason why God allowed the giants to remain. If you ask the preacher, why, what's the reason? I can tell you the reason. Hear the reason. Hear the reason. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it for a moment. Just think about it for a moment. God, why didn't you clear the lands of the giant? Why didn't you clear out the giant before your people came, um, came in? And as you think about it, you will, it will become clear in your mind. God, strain. Hey, watch this. God sift. God used that experience to sift the church. Oh, you didn't get it. Let me, let me help you with it. God used that experience to sift the church. You know, Ellen White says there's a, there's a sifting time that is coming. So, so let me help you. Let me help you. See, all of these, oh Lord, help the preacher, Holy Ghost. All of these people have been marching to Zion all these years. For 40 years or more, they, they, all of these people have been marching to Zion. S -s Stay with the preacher. Well, well over 2 million of them coming from Egypt, crossed through the Red Sea, had their experience. And now they were finally on the borders of Canaan. And all of them are ready to enter the promised land, are eager, hey, are eager to enter the promised land. All of them call themselves Israelites. And so they felt because they were Israelites, they were qualified to enter the promised land. Hey, stay with the preacher. They felt they were qualified to, to enter the promised land because they have been in the crowd from Egypt, because they crossed the Red Sea, because they had manna in the morning and manna in the evening, because they saw the cloud in the day and the fire by night. With all of these experiences, they thought that that qualified them to make it to the kingdom of God. And so as they camp out on the borders of Canaan, God did something strategic. God recognized that many of you in the hey, hello preacher, many of you in this congregation are not qualified to enter the kingdom. Many of you in this congregation are not qualified to enter, to enter Canaan. Mm, many of you here are not, you may be in the church, you may be participating, you may be journeying from a long time, you may cross the Red Sea, you may eat manna every day, you may see the fire by night and the cloud by night, you may hear the voice of God, but that does not qualify you to enter Canaan. The fact that you're in the church and the fact that you're in the crowd and the fact that you march with them does not qualify you to enter Canaan. The question is, do you have enough God in you for yourself? Is there enough faith in you to take you across Jordan? And so what happened? All of these people camp at Kadesh Barnea on the borders of Canaan thinking that they have automatic, oh Lord help the preacher, thinking that they have automatic qualification to enter because they have been in the church for a mighty long time, because they have seen what they have seen and experienced what they have experienced, because they return a faithful tithe, because they studied the Sabbath school lesson, because they're eating right and dressing right, they think they have automatic qualification to enter the kingdom of God. So when they came to the borders of Canaan, nobody thought about qualification because they thought they're already pre-qualified for the kingdom. And so God decided to put a test, oh, Jesus, right on the borders of Canaan to determine who is qualified to make it over. Oh, Lord, help us. And when the test came, God says, choose the 12 men of God. 12 spiritual leaders, 12 representative of the entire tribe of Israel. Send them over in the land. And God deliberately allowed um, uh, giants to be over there. God deliberately allowed church, um, tribulations to reach them over there and tested their faith. Because you can't enter the promised land if you don't have trust 
in God. Hey, can you hear the preacher? You can't enter the promised land if you don't have trust in God. If you don't have faith in God. If you are not committed to God. If you don't believe in the wonderful working power of God. You can't enter the promised land if the spirit of God don't dwell inside of you. Yeah, you can't enter the promised land only because you're a church member. And so on the borders of Canaan, God sent the test. When the test came through, 10, <laughs> 10, 10 out of the 12 men of God, 10 out of the 12 spiritual leaders of the church, 10 out of the 12 long-standing member of the church. Ten of the twelve whom the brethren have all these years have confidence in. Ten of the twelve. Ten of the twelve. When they reached into the, prom into the promised land and saw the giants, they forgot about their God. Ten of the twelve. Ten of the twelve. Hey, people, listen to me tonight. Ten of the twelve elders didn't make it. The test strain out ten and leave two. The test, the final test on the border, the final test for the church on the border. God tests the leaders. Do you hear me? God tests the men who are in charge of their family. God tests the men who are in charge of the churches. God tests the men who are in charge of the conferences. God tests the men who are in charge of the union. God tests the men who are in charge of the conference, the general conference. God tests the men. God tests the men who are heads of the family. On the borders of just before they cross over, just at the nick of time, just at the end of their journey, are we qualified, God? Do we have what it takes to carry us over, to come through the last test? Yeah, we have journeyed a long time, but have you noticed that the journey was not what helped them? Jesus, hey, have you noticed that even though they saw miracles from God, it didn't help them? Have you noticed that they have seen the water parted and they came over on dry land and it didn't help them? Have you noticed? Have you noticed that they have seen their enemies destroyed and it didn't help them? They have experienced the right hand of God and the power of the Almighty God. They have heard the voice of God on Mount Sinai and it didn't help them. They have seen the fire and the smoke and it still didn't help them. Have you noticed? That nothing on their journey was able to help them. Ten. The majority of the leadership of the church failed on the borders of Canaan. Why, you ask me? And the answer is clear. Though they were in the church of God, they had very little God in them. Hey, Jesus, help us. Though they were leading the tribes of Israel, they had very little God in them. They were leading because they knew how to lead. They had experience in leadership, but they had no God in them. So when the tests came, they couldn't make it over. So in closing then, look at the two who made it over. <laughs> Lord, look at the two. This is, this is Joshua and Caleb. I'm in chapter 14. I'm in verse 8. When the men, when the ten came with their bad reports, oh, they're giants over there. We are like grasshoppers. We are like grasshoppers. We can't, it's a, it's a suicide mission. I don't know why God brought us out here to them. And they went on. They went on. The two. God blessed the two. Two men, Caleb and Joshua, verse 8. Verse 8 says, 
Joshua declared, I mean verse 6 rather, but Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jeff, Jephunne, who were among those who had spied out the land, they tore their clothes in repentance. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, Hey, people, don't worry yourself. Hallelujah. Don't fret. They said, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. God don't promise us anything bad. If God promises us a land, it has to be good. Amen. Trust in the Lord was their message. They said, I'm, I'm in verse 8. They said, hey, if the, watch his word. If the Lord delights in us. Hallelujah. Have you noticed that the 10 men brought a report and up to now they have not mentioned God's name in the report. But these guys came. They said, hey, the land that we saw is good. Oh, Jesus. They didn't even mention about the giants. Because as far as the giants is concerned, they, are, they don't exist. Hey, they said, the land we saw, I don't know which land they saw. But, oh, God. But the land we saw is good. Amen. And if God delights in us, then he, come on, say this to me. Then he, not us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. A land which flows with milk and honey. Hallelujah. If God delights in us. And as, and birthing, as we stand on the brinks of eternity, understand that you and I will come to another major test in our life. Because God will not carry us over unless he tests us. Mm -hmm. Unless he has tried us and proven us. Hey, somebody. And, and so you and I as men of God need to look at what, how these guys dealt with their situation. They saw giants, but as far as they're concerned, they keep their eyes focused on Almighty God. They say, I don't care what is in my way. I don't care what lies in my future. I don't care about the troubles and the trials and the tribulation. Little time of trouble or big time of trouble. I don't care. I just know that God didn't carry me this far to leave me. I just know that he who has been with me from the beginning will carry me through the end. I just know that if he can destroy the armies of Pharaoh, there's no army in front of me, in front of me that he can't destroy. I just know that the mighty hand will carry me home because God doesn't start anything he can't finish. This is, this, this is the story of Joshua and Caleb. He says, hey people, don't worry. It is God who will carry us through. And I want to say to men of God here, as we come to the end of our journey, the signs of the time are all around us telling that we're coming to the end. Understand that God will set up another sift. Um, um, device. And by the way, it's already in place. It is called the delay. Hey, let me say this and then sit down. You must understand. You don't know why the Lord has not come as yet. Yeah, we, we understand that there is a delay. The Lord delayeth his coming. That's what we heard. The Lord delayeth his coming. You know what happened when the bridegroom delay in the story of the wise and the foolish version? Mm, the bridegroom delay. The delay was a strategy because the delay caused a shift. A sifting rather I mean, between the wise and the foolish. Had there been no delay, then the foolish version would have gotten in. But God is too wise to allow the foolish version in. So he sets up a delay. And what the delay has done is sift those who don't belong there to be outside. The delay caused the distinction between the wise and the foolish. And that delay is what caused the wise to enter and the foolish to be lost. Can I just talk to the church again? So if you think God should have come before and he has not come, God knows exactly what he's doing. And as we stand on the borders of Canaan, there is another sifting that is coming. And my brethren, men of God, I challenge us this evening. Ensure by the grace of God that our faith is locked up in Jesus so that when the sifting time comes, we can make it through. We can make it through. Oh, did I say that was the final thought? I'm sorry, here's the, here's the final thought. So ten men of God. Ten, ten, ten men of God. Ten seasoned leader, leaders of the church who left Egypt, 
who have experienced all the mighty powers of God failed to trust in God at the very end of their journey. Does that scare you? Ten, the majority of the leadership failed to trust in God at the end of their journey. That's bad. But here's what's worse. So they gave their report to Moses. And rather than telling Moses privately in his tent, they gave the report publicly so that everybody could hear. And those, help me, Holy Ghost, those 10 faithless leaders, those 10 faithless men of God, those 10 unconverted men who have been leading the tribes of Israel, infected the rest of the church with their fear and their disbelief. Those 10 men contaminated the rest of the congregation. Those 10 men of God whose names are on the church record, who have been in the office perhaps for a mighty long time. Those 10 men whom the church people have looked upon for all these years and have been uh, attending their acts and their questions. Those 10 men who have been respected all this time because the church put their trust in those leaders rather than putting their trust, eh, rather than putting their trust in Almighty God. Let me say that one more time. Because the church put their trust in those leaders rather than putting their trust in Almighty God, those 10 men poisoned the entire congregation. See, because the church is really supposed to believe their leaders. So that's why the leaders have to ensure that we have a connection with God. Because if not, we have the capacity to poison the entire church. The entire congregation, the entire 12 tribes of Israel were lost. Tribes were lost. 12 tribes. The entire Israel was lost. Because 10 faithless, unconverted men held the position of leader of their tribe. At the last moment, at the last moment, you know the story quite well. The entire tribe of Israel, the entire congregation rebelled against Moses. And in the book of, in the book of Exodus chapter 14, they says, we want a new leader. <clears throat> we're turning back and we're going back to Egypt. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We're going back to Egypt because there's giants in the land. I want to challenge somebody tonight. No matter how many giants you see ahead of you, don't go back to Egypt. Hey, no matter what anybody tells you, no matter how much discouragement you hear on the right or here on the left, no matter where the discouragement is coming from, press on in Jesus' name. God didn't carry you this far to lead you. Hey, there will be giants. Don't let the giants turn you around. There will be circumstances. Don't let the circumstances turn you around. There will be disappointment. Don't let the disappointment turn you around. March on to Zion. God didn't carry you this far to leap. Put your trust in Almighty God. And he will see you through. Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. Lord... It's, 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 it is troubling. 
when we recognize these 10 leaders, these 10 heads of tribes, these 10 spiritual figures, these 10 known men of God, it is troubling God when we recognize that these men have experienced all your mighty working power and reach the very end. It is troubling God to see so many fall at the very end. Lord, we are leaving this presentation tonight with an unmistakable decision, lesson we learn from that. Men will never be our example, but our example is the true and living God. We're leaving here tonight as men of God that we will keep our eyes focused on you. We we'll leave here tonight with the assurance that irrespective of the giants that will come across us, irrespective of the challenges that we will face in these last days, because we know we will face it, Lord. We're leaving here tonight like Caleb and Joshua, saying with the confidence that which you promise us, you will give to us. And ain't no giant can stop us, because if you delight in us, you will carry us through. And so, Lord, I pray tonight for the men on this platform who have been walking with you, but who are now seeing giants. I pray for them tonight who are now uh, second-guessing, Lord. I pray for them tonight, God, who are surprised by the amount of problems they are having. Never thought that as a child of God they would have all of these problems. I pray for them tonight, Jesus, if they are in a land that eaten up the inhabitants. I pray for them tonight, God, whose faith is failing on the borders. I pray for them tonight, God, my colleagues, my men, my men in the church and men outside the church and any man listening and woman listening I pray tonight God that the spirit your spirit that went into Caleb your spirit that went into Joshua that your spirit will take possession of these men all of us tonight that equip us Jesus with a determination that comes what may we will press on because we know that you didn't carry us this far to leave us Thank you, God, for, for hearing our prayers. Thank you for what you have done and what you will continue to do for us. But we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And I hope you were blessed and encouraged by your interaction with this content. If you have any questions or would like to take the next step, head over to caymanadventist.org and click Contact. Or call us at 345 945-9029 That's 345-945-9029 May God bless you richly.